Look, listen. I hate to say this, but flying cars will never be a thing. Now, I know, I know, they are so epic, they are 420 Thanos, Keanu Reeves, Marvel, epic science machines, and they might even turn you into a pickle. However, in real life, flying cars would either be A, completely impractical, B, hazardous, C, detrimental to your mental health. The entire concept is just non-viable. And when I say non-viable, I don't mean we will not see any flying cars, period. I do think they'll have some kind of niche application, but nothing beyond that. Flying cars, by and large, are just a stupid concept. And if they were just that, I wouldn't really bother. You know, there's plenty of stupid ideas out there and they usually die on their own. However, I also think that flying cars present a unique and exotic danger, uh, multiple dangers in fact, and that's the reason why this video exists. So how and why are flying cars such a bad idea? Idea. That's what we're going to look at. After a word from today's sponsor, Atlas VPN. Atlas VPN offers a service that encrypts your data and hides your virtual location from prying eyes. It helps you protect your privacy and allows you to bypass those ever annoying region locks. With Atlas VPN, you'll be able to unlock all that content locked away from you arbitrarily only based on your location, like on Netflix and other streaming platforms. All you need to do is open the app, pick a server, and that's it. Atlas VPN also includes a breach scanner function, able to tell you if there were any data leaks associated with a given email address. Atlas VPN also allows you to block unwanted trackers from websites with their new tracker blocker feature. All you need to do is flip the switch. Right now, Atlas VPN is running a Black Friday sale where you can get their service for just $1.70 per month plus 6 months extra and of course a 30-day money-back guarantee. The link is in the description. Atlas, of course, runs both on desktop and mobile and is compatible across all well-known operating systems. Protect your privacy and don't let region blocks stop you. Steal this Black Friday deal today by clicking the link in the description Thank you for checking out Atlas VPN. Ads like this help support what I do. And now, back to the video. So, how and why are flying cars such a horrendously bad idea? Let's look at the first point practicality. So the reason why we came up with this thing called transportation is to get to places quicker. So we can divide traveling into three relevant categories. Short range between 0 and 50 kilometers, mid range between 50 and 500 kilometers, and long range which is above 500 kilometers. All right, so I believe that here we can already see the first problem. Namely that flying cars just don't make a lot of sense for short or long ranges. If your destination is within a short range, you can just walk, cycle, take public transit, or you know, you can just drive if those are an option and if you're going long range well then you can just take a train or an airplane or just drive even because flying cars just aren't that fast their top speeds are generally 160 to 200 kilometers per hour which is a bit more than highway speed essentially and is very much inferior to high-speed rail and vastly inferior to airplanes so the practical use of flying cars is basically limited to mid-range only also you have to make sure that you can land at or near the destination also also you can't really use a flying car if the weather is too bad you know, if there is a giant rainstorm or snowstorm or the winds are too high. Also, 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 if you're going at night, you have to make absolutely sure that your destination has an illuminated landing area. And the thing about flying cars is that they are essentially just foldable sports planes. As such, their structure is very light and so very vulnerable. So if you go to a store in, say, land mode and someone backs into you in the parking lot and, say, dents one of your flaps, then you can't really fly until it gets replaced. So every time you use your flying car in land mode, you are one one slight bump away from weeks of no flying and hundreds, perhaps thousands of dollars of service fees. Alright, so things aren't looking great for the flying car so far. You can only really use it at a certain range, in good weather, during daylight, the destination has to have landing infrastructure, and even with the slightest damage you immediately have to go to the repair shop. Alright, so let's move on to the second aspect of flying cars, namely the hazard they pose. So flying cars are essentially half a ton projectiles flying around at moderate speeds. And in the case of mass adoption, that would also be a greater number of accidents. You know, Billy Bob discovers a dent on the right flap in the Walmart parking lot and thinks to himself, yeah, it is probably fine. And then it turns out mid-flight that it's not really fine. Because of issues like this, flying cars would basically need to be banned above all human settlements and basically all other strategically important infrastructure. For example, military installations, airports, seaports, high voltage cables. And then there's also the environmental considerations, meaning that flying cars would need to be banned above nature reserves, migratory bird routes, and any other areas where they might end up damaging or disturbing the local wildlife. So in order to really mitigate the hazard posed by flying cars, you would need to organize things. Consider this map of Budapest and its surrounding areas. So where would our no-fly zones be? 
turns out pretty much everywhere. So the only real solution here is to essentially establish corridors, you know, places where you can concentrate flying cars and focus on minimizing their negative consequences. And in order to avoid chaos on the roads, like flying cars randomly taking off and landing, you would need to establish a whole bunch of huge airstrips where potentially hundreds of flying cars can take off or land at the same time. And all this would need to be coordinated, of course, somehow. So once again, we are talking about the mass adoption scenario. And wow, what a great idea, having these focused busy transit corridors with some major transit hubs along the way where people can get on and off. Hmm, if only Hungary had something like this, it would be such a great help, you know, something which can move a lot of people economically, which is absolutely perfect for middle distances, something which runs along these corridors and ends in these big transit hubs, so to speak. And someone should really call Elon Musk about this, because this shit needs inventing right now. I mean, this would revolutionize our transit. Yeah, um, so anyway, the third and last aspect of flying cars that I want to touch on is your mental health. You know, even if flying cars would be flying around settlements, they would still make a lot of noise. And this would be true even if a flying car would be only as loud as a regular car. Flying cars travel at an altitude of around 2-3 kilometers generally. For comparison, airliners travel at around 10 kilometers. Now our current land-based highways are already super loud, but we can soundproof them. With air corridors this is obviously not possible. So you would be looking at a constant background buzzing even outside cities, or I should say especially outside cities, you know, the places which should be actually quieter. And this of course would have a devastating effect on everybody's mental health. No matter what you do, no matter where you go, the maddening buzzing will always be in your ear. And I don't know about you, but for me personally, this would be a version of hell. And the thing is, the more people adopt flying cars, the more severe these problems get. But then again, I don't think they'll be adopted en masse because of the aforementioned problems. They're just too severe. And all this renders the concept of flying cars effectively useless. It's just another form of inefficient individual transport, which we should be phasing out at this point. Alright, so this was my take on flying cars. And I haven't even mentioned things like terrorism, you know, stuff like loading your flying car with fertilizer or something and then kamikazeing into a building. Or, you know, load up a bunch of molotovs and use it as a bomber. Even without these, the case against flying cars is strong enough, I think. So anyway, thank you for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, and do check out my Patreon if you think this content is worth your money. And I'll be seeing you next time.